Go for it, mate. Well, everyone, welcome back to a very exciting episode of the Storybox podcast. If you have seen the, the new film, Interceptor, or if you've even seen G.I. Joe Retaliation, Point Break, uh, The Best of Me, Monte Carlo, Hacksaw Ridge, for goodness sake, I mean, so many great films. You're going to know who I'm, I'm talking about right now. His name is Luke Bracey, and apart from the fact that he's an Aussie and I love Australians, why not? Because I am one. He's established himself as a leading man defined by his versatile performances, innate curiosity and personal charisma, which I love. I kind of relate to that quite a bit. He was seen in Netflix Netflix's holiday film, which went to number one. <laughs> I love that film, by the way. It was absolutely hilarious. Well done, <laughs> mate, uh, for that one. It hit 78 countries and was seen by, get this, 68 million households. That is just absolutely crazy. And he can be seen in the upcoming Baz Luhrmann's film, Elvis Presley, which is coming out very, very soon, I believe, June 24. We're recording this on June 20th, so just around the corner. Luke, man, can I welcome you so much to the Storybox podcast today? Thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here, man. And thank you so much for making the time. You're all the way out over in London, I believe. I'm in here in uh, good old sunny coast. It is. What time is it over there for you now? Uh, we're in the morning here. It's about half nine in the morning. So pretty Amazing. cruisy. We're, we're here uh, at 6.37. And in my audience knows that I'm not a night person, but I'm going to make a, a huge effort today. <laughs> I'm very excited, man. And my, my very first question for you before we dive into all your other amazing stuff is what does success look like for you? That's such a hard question, isn't it? Um, success in what area of life, you know, um, mm. I think, I think um, success is a number of different things combining, right? Um, I think you can have success in one area of your life, but I don't think that, translates to complete success in all of your life. I think, you know, life can be a, a bit of a struggle of like just keeping all your cups of water kind of filled equally. And sometimes one cup regarding one part of your life can kind of drain out a little bit and goes into another. And you've got to, I find it this kind of constant balancing act of trying to balance out all the different personal, professional parts of your life, family, friends, rest, work. That's it's it's always a constant state of flux that you're always trying to find the equilibrium of. So I don't know if I think it'd be pretty hard to know that like, oh, I'm successful now. No matter what you do, I think. I think you're always looking for success in all the parts of your life or, or keeping all the parts of your life balanced within each other, in harmony with each other. And if you can maintain that with, you know, minimal stress and, and kind of, you know, that might be a form of success. <laughs> Have you found it challenging over the course of your life to sort of keep all the glasses half full? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Like to, to, to keep it all even, even is that is the challenge of life. I think, you know, things can take your focus and can take your, your, your concentration for X amount of time. And suddenly you can look back and go, Oh, I haven't, I haven't kind of, uh, watered that plant over there. You know, maybe you, uh, are working really hard and therefore maybe some personal relationships between an old friend might fall apart or you haven't spoken to them a bit and you go, Oh, I've been so busy with this part of my life. I've got to get back to that part of my life and talk to that old friend or, or I've got to give mum and dad a call or, or my sisters or, you know, or you can be in a relationship with someone and then suddenly you're not concentrating so much on work and, and that goes and you go, oh, I've, this is so great, but I've got to, got to find the balance between my work. I've got to get back to work and I've got to maintain that and then your family and stuff. So I think it's just a constant, I think every day, week, you're kind of reassessing where that is and, you're never going to get it all right. You know, there might be these fleeting moments where it's all, all perfectly aligned. But I think, I think the challenge of life is, is, is constantly moving and, and constantly juggling these parts um, that make up, you know, the whole rounded you. So I know success can be those fleeting moments where they all feel like they're in balance. What do you do for fun? 
I love to uh, I love to do a crossword, like as weird as it sounds, like a, a cryptic crossword. I love getting a newspaper, sitting down and reading it, having a coffee, doing the crossword, kind of zoning out a little bit that way. I like to learn things. You know, most most of my reading I do um, outside of work. Obviously, I read scripts most days, and and that's a lot of it's all kind of fiction, right? Yeah. So most of the reading I do will be nonfiction, you know, trying to learn about something I don't know about yet or, or, or you know, catch up on the kind of world events and, and stuff like that. Um, I like to exercise. I like to hang out with my friends. I like to try a couple of things some travel. You know, I try and be as spontaneous as I can in that way where, you know, if something kind of piques my interest, I'll try and follow that instinct and go and explore that for a bit and come back. If I'm near the beach, I love to go for a surf or a swim, a bit of exercise, stuff like that. What's a what's a thought that you uh, have been currently mulling over that you've read recently that is sort of, yeah, sparking your interest a little bit? I don't know. I, I'm I'm interested in I'm interested in kind of uh, trying to create more. Right now, I'm kind of I've just moved into a um into a flat here in London that's unfurnished. And so right now my big kind of focus is creating a space for the first time in a number of years for myself. And that kind of project is really exciting to me. I've been, yeah, fairly nomadic since about halfway through 2019, really. Um, And kind of my, most of my life, really, (laughs) most of my adult life, I've been kind of nomadic. So, this is one of the first places I've had where it's a bit of a blank slate and I'm really interested as to what type of environment I'm going to create for myself and, you know, being able to stop for a minute and find out what's going to make me happy and what's going to make me content in my own little space and, and kind of holding that down. So that's kind of on the fourth month, forefront of my mind right now. I have, um, I bought a like chair yesterday. So that's about all that's in this place is like a little chair <laughs> that I walked past at a used furniture store yesterday. And other than that, there is some photos that I've put up with Blue Tack and a bed that I got delivered the day I moved in. So other than that, I have this complete blank slate. And right now I'm, I'm really excited about creating an environment that's mine that will stimulate me, that will calm me, that will allow me to have a, a base to then go and explore other things from um, that's kind of the, always been the, the juggle with my life and my job is, you know, not having that solid, solid place where I can go to and have a little bit of a, you know, bit of solitude or a place to like mount my, my journeys from. So to have that for the first time in a number of years is really exciting. And it's kind of all I've been thinking about for the past you know, kind of five weeks since I, since I managed to snag the place. So I felt recently over the past five weeks, like just before I was, I was getting the keys to this place felt like when you, when you really, really need to take a piss and you're on your way home and you're like, fine. And then suddenly you get five meters from your door yeah. and you are just about to piss yourself and then you can't get the key in and it's just, you know, so it's felt like that like last moment of getting home before you need to go to the toilet and it just hasn't, and it's finally arrived. So I feel, I feel kind of quite relieved and, and it makes me really excited for what I'm going to do moving forward over the rest of the year and the rest of the next kind of 12, 18 months, which I'm not quite sure what I am, what I'm going to do, with, but having this place and, and kind of creating this environment will really help me clarify where I think I want to go or, 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 or what inspires me in the future that way. What led you to making or, or pulling the trigger on that decision? Cause it's not an easy decision to make, is it? Uh, no, it, it wasn't. Um, but it also kind of was in the same way. I, I think, I'm, I'm so used to kind of being put in a, in a place that I don't know and making the most of it and having a great time and creating a, a, a little community or a little, a little area that I feel relaxed in. For me, I, I've been in and out of America since you know, the second half of 2010. And, and you know, I was, oh, sorry, 
And then, um, you know, I would, I would maybe be in Los Angeles for a month or two and then I'd book a job. I'd go off and do that job for a couple of months, come back to Los Angeles for a month. Then it might be Christmas time in Australia and I go there for six, eight weeks and see the family and then back and kind of on that merry-go-round and, yeah. and kind of after by like 2019, I was kind of like, Oh, I think I would like to experience and live in another place on my time off rather than America. You know, I feel like if I was anywhere for nine years, I'd be like, oh, I kind of want to maybe go try my off time somewhere else. And my mum's originally English, so I have a British passport. And so it's all, it's very easy for me to stay here. And I just, I've always wanted to live here. I've all, every time I've been to London, I've always felt comfortable here. Maybe that is because of my mum and just kind of intrinsically you, you get it. You know, I've, I've grown up kind of around the culture and, 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 and that, so yeah, just a part of me thought this is a really good place to to settle for now, um, to find a place and 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 to kind of learn new things. There's something about London and and being around in and around Europe where the diversity of people and things and and culture and and events and and the way of life um, is something that I haven't been able to completely live in for for longer than a, than a couple of months. So. It was just that kind of new adventure and, and, and a new perspective on life. Um, I feel like if I did, if I worked in finance and had been in Hong Kong for nine years, I'd want to move after being there for nine years or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I just feel it was a good time to, to just reevaluate and go get a different perspective on life. Mm. Yeah, I find that I'm getting a, a different perspective while up here. For, for my own yeah. life, it is interesting how when you you're taken out of that normal environment that you've known for quite some time, or or this is for me. I know for you, you've sort of had this nomadic life of moving from place to place. But even then, I, I still find that the moment you do move from place to place, you do get a renewed perspective to some extent. Whereas for me, I've been in the one place pretty much for 26 years of my life, so it was this massive massive renewed perspective it's not like getting these smaller ones along the way it's just like mm. this massive one straight away does that make sense absolutely and and sometimes life you know it's kind of out of your choice sometimes and and that's the kind of the great things can come your way when you when you hadn't thought of it you know what i mean you know if something is is put on you and you move to this different place that kind of wasn't your decision. Suddenly you can move in, you can, you can get there and you can see it with this complete lack of expectation. And that's a really freeing thing. Yeah. I think, you know, you can, you can find the positives in, in, in finding yourself somewhere new that you didn't expect because suddenly your eyes are open to everything around you. You know, maybe if you had your dream set on moving somewhere and you got there, it's inevitably maybe not going to live up to everything that you thought it was going to be. And, and there's that invites disappointment, but conversely it could also live up in this completely different way. But, but having, having to move somewhere and, 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 and not really having an idea of what you think on it, I think it can lead you to be more open than, than if you had decided to move somewhere on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right there. Luke, have you always wanted to be an actor or when, when was the moment that you realized that, Hey, acting was for me. Uh, I never wanted to be an actor. It was never oh. an idea of mine. Um, I, I, yeah, it was, um, kind of chance that it, that it, that it came into my life and, and I do it now as a profession. Um, but when it did, I, um, I remember like my third day of, of doing it. Basically I, I got asked to audition for home and away about a year after I finished high school and did the audition and got the job and kind of when I was working for my dad, he's a builder. I personally, I, I wanted to play professional um, rugby union or, or rugby league with my life. Um, that's what I wanted to do. And then suddenly I was on the set of home and away, not having any idea, but, knowing I really, really enjoyed it. And I just, uh, about my third day of home and away, I, I just realized that it was so much fun and that I really enjoyed doing it. I want to give it a crack. And ever since then, I've, I've only ever been an actor. Not that there hasn't been 
periods where you're going, what am I doing? This is crazy. But maybe like the, my naivety kind of helped me in that, in that sense that I was 18, 19 years of age uh, or 19 ish year. And then, you know, was dumb enough to think that it'd be all right. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I just kind of, you know, once I decided to do it, I thought, all right, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly. And, and, and so I tried to get as much of the best advice I could. I tried to become as, uh, as good at it as I could. And there's a catch 22 with this job where you can, uh, the, the real leaps forward you make doing this acting is when you are working. But then to get the jobs, you have to audition, especially when you're younger and you don't really know that much. So it's this kind of this constant state of like getting a little job and like learning a bit more and then feeling like you're plateauing and then getting another one. And, and you know, so it's that kind of balance. But but I felt like I've been, as I say, I think I was just dumb enough to to think it would be all right. And luckily enough, I, it was, you know, I got to move um, not long after home and away. I, I managed to, be quite responsible with my money from home and away. Um, my mum was really good at making me kind of save a whole chunk of my weekly pay packet so that when I finished the six months on it, I didn't have to get a real job and I could really concentrate on on acting and learning about it. And then got an American movie maybe five months later and then had to move to America after that. And, and I was lucky that I, I, I found really great um representation and, and and kind of mentors over there that that kind of helped guide me through it and yeah it's been a bit of a journey I think that was that was 2010 so look back now and you know you go god where did that time go but then I sit and think for more than three and a half seconds I go oh yeah I've done heaps in that time it actually makes sense that that was 2010 <laughs> I did that and I did that so yeah it was just kind of this process of putting one foot in front of the other and wanting to wanting to learn more i think there's a there's a great something great i heard once and i think it's a real great rule to live by which is it's more important to be interested than interesting yeah and if you are interested you're automatically going to be interesting and so when you get into a work like this that i had no idea about i was thoroughly interested by it and so i just wanted to learn as much as i could i wanted to work as much as i could and and so all the study and all the practice and all that, it, it, it never, it's never felt like a job. And every time I've got a job, I've, I always forget that I'm getting paid and that's always a great thing. And I feel really fortunate about that, that I, I forget that I get paid and then I forget that people are going to watch it until the trailer comes out. And then suddenly I just have huge anxiety for like the month before the movie comes out in between the trailer being there. Cause I just love my going to work my job i really enjoy my job and i feel that's why i'm that's the luckiest thing that's ever happened to me is that i found a job that i don't consider work and so yeah i i've, I've been a really fortunate in that sense so yeah uh just try and get better and learn more and try not to make the same mistakes twice but not get too hard on myself if i do the star luke bracy still gets nervous people you heard it from his lips, not mine. <laughs> no, yeah, no, absolutely. I remember, I remember when I, um, when the trailer for Holiday came out, and I'd never really done a comedy film before, and I had such a great time making it, and it was awesome. And I just, it was just a really great time. And then suddenly, a year later, or a bit more, year, eighteen months later, this trailer comes out for it, and I. I've, I've kind of locked myself in a room for a day just going, what have I done? What are you doing thinking you're funny? What are you doing? You, you think you're funny. You're not funny. You're lame, Luke. And it just like had this like weird moment of, oh my God, what have I done? Everyone's going to see this. This is, oh, what if I'm a dork? I don't know. But then, then you know, it kind of eases off. But yeah, there's always that pang. I always, I always remember people are going to see the movies when the trailer comes out. That's the first time I remember they're going to see them. And that's when I get nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but then once, once I do some press and it's kind of normal and then once it comes out, you know, it's not my movie anymore. It's the audience's. So I kind of, I don't own it. It doesn't really matter what I think <laughs> as long as people enjoy it. And, and, you know, one thing I've learned kind of over my years is that every Every film I do make 
is someone's favorite movie. Yeah. And that's like a really comforting thing for me. That's something that I fall back on when I get nervous about people seeing my work or anything like that. It's like, look, someone's going to love it. Someone's going to love this film. Some, this is going to be someone's favorite film that really helped them through a tough time or really lift uh, or really, you know, kind of emphasized a great moment in their life. And, and, you know, sure. People are not going to like it. And some people don't like vanilla ice cream, you know, some people don't like chocolate ice cream, you know, like, but some people do, some people absolutely love it. So that always comforts me when I get nervous or I, I get like anxious of, of the work I've done is that I know for a fact that someone loves that film and what we did for them on that day when they watched it was a nice thing. And they're going to remember that day they watched that movie or they're going to go back to it when they're having a hard time or when they're having a great time. So yeah, whenever, whenever I'm nervous, I always try and remember that. And um, then it doesn't really matter to me. All I did was try and make something for people. You did a fantastic job in that movie, I must say. I I was laughing my head off. Um, Holiday was your first comedy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mass, massive challenge. I think you are, this is a term that I created, but I think you can resonate with it. Creatively curious all the time. That's, that's the yeah. way you seem to me. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things people always go, oh, what type of movies do you want to do? What type of things do you want to do? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't really have a favorite type of movie. I'd like to watch a bunch of different kinds of movies. So, and because I never had a kind of dream to do this, everything I do is a win. Everything I do is exciting and new. And, you know, I was stupid enough to start doing this when I was 19 years of age without any idea of what I was going to do. So if anything new and different can come up, I'd, I'd be really interested to, to try it and have a look at it and, and, and to see what I can learn from it. Because everything, every every part of your life, every everything you, you you do informs the next thing you do, and is informed by the things you've done before. And yeah. you know, doing some action movies and a war movie and a spy movie all helped me when I eventually did this comedy. Everything I learned from doing them kind of helped when I did this type of movie. And and since doing that movie, it's helped me with all the other stuff I've done after it. So if you just all see it as all you know you know, steps of a ladder on your way up, you know, that each one only exists because of the one below it. And so, yeah, the, you know, trying to find new and different things is great. Trying to find things that you love doing, try and work with people that you enjoy working with. At the end of the day, it's about, you know, I think if I'm enjoying myself in my work and in my life, then I think that'll translate in the work I do and that the people watch, you know, that that's the more, more enjoyment you're having, the more effort you're putting in, the more time you're going to spend thinking about it and, and, and putting into it. So yeah, you know, if I can do as many different things as I can, I, I'll be really happy with that because I'll always learn something. Mm-hmm. I'll always learn something I didn't know before and, and, and can take that onto the next thing. And yeah. I always see my job as kind of a big tree and like each branch once you get to what the end of another branch, then another five branches come out from it. And you go, Oh, there's all these different things to do. And that kind of just is this never ending kind of pathways to all these different kind of areas. So, and so I've always looked at the work in, in that way. So if I can do different things, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and very, very satisfied. I think. That's the joy and ultimate fulfillment of life. I really believe is constantly learning, mm-hmm. constantly improving and constantly doing things that either challenge you, that excite you, that nerve you, uh, that give you that "I've got a piss" feeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it exactly. Because it is climbing. Well, it, you know, that's it. And and you know, for me, fear is a, a really great motivator in a positive way. Where as soon as I get a job, you know, you have that amazing extreme doubt that, like, I don't know what I'm doing. What. Uh, uh, I have no idea how to do this. What am I going to do? But that makes you cross your T's and dot your I's and put in the time and put in the effort. I think, I think if I ever got a job that I thought, oh yeah, this will be a piece of this. I'll shoot this in. No worries. I think that's, that's a pretty dangerous area to start m- moving into in your life. That complacency can, can drop in suddenly. You're not kind of, you're not learning 
and that's always going to be probably the worst thing. You're not, you're not kind of trying to get better in that way. I'm always kind of, I'm nowhere near that. I, hopefully I never get to that stage where I kind of take a job to take a job. Cause I think it's going to be easy. I think all jobs are, no matter what it is, is a really difficult, especially acting. I think acting is really hard and <laughs> I try really hard at it. <laughs> it takes work and like, I still don't think I'm any good at it. So, you know, that's like, you still, I know I've got better, but I, there's still so much for me to go. There's still so far for me to go to get better at this thing. And I guess that's the really motivating thing about my job is that if you stick to it and if you put your mind to it, you, you can only get better at it, you know, through, through, through doing it. You know, there's no, there's no moment I think in, in acting or, or in creative fields or in, in art in a way where you get it and suddenly, Oh, you're like, Oh yeah, great. I know what I'm doing now. Perfect. I'm, I've done this. So that's always a really great motivating thing for me. The fear of, of doing something new and different and doing it better than you did it last time. Yeah. What would you say? This may be a hard question to answer, but we'll see how we go. What would you say has been your most vulnerable moment as an actor? Oh God, all of them. I don't know. Every time I get a job, every time I get a job, it's a vulnerable thing. Every time you kind of, every day when you're filming a movie is the only day you film that bit really. So like every day is grand final day. Yeah. And you know, every, every, every take could be in the film. And that's always a vulnerable thing. You know, everything you do can, and you only get one chance to do it. Uh, you always get home. I always find myself, you know, getting home from work and having a shower at the end of the day and like, you know, scrubbing myself in the shower. And then I always have this moment where I go, Oh, I should have done that today. <laughs> oh, why didn't I do that? If I spent the whole day doing that. I should have done that. And that happens kind of every day you come home from work and, and it's really kind of, annoying but also exciting because you go to bed thinking okay tomorrow i'm going to be so open and and try and think of all the things that i thought of now but but inevitably you'll get home the next night and you'll be like oh i should have done i should have said that oh i should have picked up that thing oh you know but that always you know that's the excitement of it you know it's this kind of elusive this elusive kind of feather that floats in the wind that you're always trying to grab and sometimes you get it and, and sometimes you just miss it, but you come back with something. Yeah. How did your project with Baz Luhrmann come about? The Elvis project? That's, that's yeah, that was, a small um, project, man. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a huge film to be involved in, in a film like that is on a selfish level. It's really exciting. You know, these movies, a movie like Elvis, it's so huge. Um, you really feel like you're making an old school movie. You know, there's, um, you get to work and then there's just 400 people dressed as the 1970s just walk past you and you're like, oh, this is, this is exciting. And then suddenly you're watching Elvis perform. So it was pretty exciting. I was very fortunate with how it came about. Um, there was, when they were originally going to start filming just before COVID, um, I wasn't involved with the project. And then COVID happened and it kind of, everything went into a kind of stasis. And then, June, July, August, maybe in 2020, I kind of got an email saying, Hey, um, Baz Luhrmann wants to give you a call about playing this role in, in the Elvis movie. And I thought, Oh, okay. Um, they're like, yeah. So have your phone on you at midday. And I went, all right. My phone rang. It was, it was Baz. And we had a, we had a nice chat for about, about an hour, just about life, about the story. He kind of explained a bit about it, about the characters and just about, things in general one one of the things about Baz is he he's a really interested person he mm. knows a lot of things about many different things he knows something about everything mm. so he's a fascinating person to talk to and and you can talk about absolutely anything with him because he's he's got such a wealth of knowledge in all aspects of life not just movies and art but the world and and and, and history and, and 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 all these things so so that was good. And then at the end of the conversation, after about an hour, he goes, well, I'd love to have you, mate. You know, I'd love to see you on the Gold Coast in a, in a month. And I went, okay, yeah, sounds good, mate. It was, you know, it was the easiest job I've ever got. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was really fortunate. I don't know what happens. I don't know why, but um, 
but I'm really thankful that Baz kind of trusted me to, to come and do a job. Um, and, and I got up there and, and then, you know, my role was, I played this guy called Jerry Schilling, who was mm. basically Elvis's best mate and kind of the one person who never really wanted anything from him. You know, there was so many people around Elvis, so many hangers on people taking things from him and, 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 and wanting things. And, and, and I, and my guy, he was a really good dude that just cared about his friend and wanted the best for his friend. And, you know, when that's your role in the movie, that's, an, that's, that's a really nice place to come into a production like that because, you know, when, when you're filming and when you're acting, it's kind of like playing a game. It's kind of like playing a sport. You know, you kind of, I, I pass the ball to someone and they pass it to someone else. They pass it back to you. And so to come in and just know that you're, you know, there for the team and, you know, mm-hmm. Jerry's role was to help his friend get through this crazy life that he lived and just look out for him. So I kind of took that on when it came to the production, my job's to come in and, and do my best job and, and support everyone around me and, and just be there and try and be a great teammate, and be a great member of the team and try and help the team create something great. So that's a really enjoyable role to play in a film and not just the character, but just to be a part of a film set and have that role. It's a really, really fun, fun job to come in and be a supportive person and support people around you and be supported. It's always really, really fun that way. So yeah, for me, I got to spend six months on the Gold Coast kind of watching a crazy, crazy film get made and then I watched the film inside of the film as well, which is always a funny thing. You know, you got these moments where suddenly you look over and it's Elvis Presley and you go, what am I doing here with this wig on and this like orphan clothes and, and dressed in Las Vegas? You, what am I doing? You know, you always have these moments of kind of blinking going, this is mental. What, what? I can't believe I'm doing this for a job. Oh, and I'm getting paid too. Oh, this is great. I'm going to keep doing this. So I have those moments like, all the time on that set, it was it was pretty special. And then working with Baz on on just a professional level was was such a joy. He he really he's such a a great collaborator in that way that you know he's got such a huge thing in his mind that he has to do, and he's got to be all over every single aspect of this film. And <clears throat> my job is to know this person really really well, and to do that so. For me to do all my work on that, to come in and be like, hey, Baz, i got an idea for this, mate. If I say this, I, I just said that in that other scene. So I thought maybe if I come in and Baz would be like, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, do that. And so his kind of <clears throat> trust um, and, and kind of allowing you to play and, and be a, a fully kind of actualized member of this, of this group was, was just a joy to work with. And yeah, loved working with Baz. Hopefully I get to do it again one day. Well, I, for one, am very much looking forward to actually watching the film when it does come out here. I'll be probably the first one, one of the first ones in the cinema because I love Elvis and his story. It's crazy and I love his music too and what he did. My second last question for you, what do you love the most about yourself and your story? God, that's a really hard question. Um, I think it's kind of hard for me to ask answer what I love about myself <laughs> without sounding conceited and arrogant. Um, You're more than welcome to, man. It's your show. Look, <laughs> one thing. One thing I've been kind of, I look back on, on kind of where I started and where I came from, and uh, in that way, and like not wanting to do this. I feel, I feel kind of proud of myself that I just went and did it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I feel proud that I, that I had a go and of course there was doubts, but there was a part of me that when I got home and away, I didn't try to get that job. I just went and did an audition and suddenly I got the job. And then when I decided after being on home and away for a couple of years and, and for a few months, and I decided I wanted to be an actor. I had this thought, my, my parents go, it's a pretty hard job, mate. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's very, very hard to like make it acting. Are you sure you want to do this? And I thought, well, I didn't even try to get this job. So imagine if I tried mm. and I, I took that attitude towards and I've always taken that attitude of if I put in the graft and, and, you know, if I work as, you know, at least I'm giving myself the best chance. At least, you know, one thing I learned kind of doing this job 
especially when it comes to auditions and getting jobs, right, is that all I can worry about is if I've done a good job, if I've worked as hard as I could work, if I could put in as much as I could do, because then there's so many external factors that are completely out of my my range and creatively out of my control that go into getting a job acting mm. wise. You know, you can be the most, you can do the best audition you've ever had, but you walked into that room and you look like the person that bullied the director in high school. And you know, that's completely out of your hands. That's got nothing to do with you. You might've been amazing, but you just might, they just might not, you just might remind them something that whatever it is, you know, that, that's just one stupid example. But, but I always felt, if I'd put the work in to the degree that I knew I couldn't do any more or do any better then I couldn't, I can't really argue with that with myself. So I think kind of learning that, that it's not about the, the, the end of it or, or getting something. It's about kind of learning things along the way. And that's probably one of the most things I've, most important things I've learned is that, if you if you've put in the effort and 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 tried something to the best of your ability, then there's nothing you can really be disappointed by, yeah. Because you've obviously learned something, you've obviously given it something a go, and I guess that's what life is about, really, isn't it? Kind of pushing yourself, trying to do something to the best of your ability. I, I think that's a really um, kind of exciting thing when you can sit back and go, yeah, I, I honestly couldn't have tried any harder to do that. And I'm proud that I did that. Mm. Maybe that's what I'm proud of in my life that I kind of have always been willing to give something a go um, and try, if I don't know it, try it anyway and just try my hardest. And, you know, I think, I think not knowing, knowing, knowing everything you don't know is really helpful. Knowing that you don't know anything is really helpful. <laughs> you know, you suddenly you're a bit of a sponge and, and you don't have an ego about it. You know, you can go, Oh, I want to learn what you've got to tell me about this. So I want to learn what you've got to tell me about this. Maybe that's what I'm proud of. What's that saying? It, uh, it's better to try something and fail than fail to try. I think that resonates. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. People, people have, people have most definitely, um, articulated it. Um, uh, a lot better than I have. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think you articulated it pretty well. And <laughs> your life reflects it, but no, I mean, I am very much grateful for your time today. This is my final question for you. This is my all time favorite question. I love asking all my guests at the very end. It is a hypothetical one, but I want you to imagine with me for a moment. I think you might like this one because you are a, a, an actor and, and filmmaker and, and such. Uh, but just imagine with me for a moment that you've been able to reach the age of 100. All your friends and your family have decided to put together a film for you of everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. Don't ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll call it magic for the sake of argument. But they've been able to get it and show it to you on your 100th birthday. What do you want that film to say and to show about your life? I I, I hope I was a... a, a uh, a good son, a good brother, a good mate, and a good person. I hope that I was considerate and thought of other people and tried my hardest and yeah, I hope I was a good son, a good brother, a good mate, and a good bloke. It's a good send off message. Luke Bracey people, yeah. thank you so much for your time, man, for your wisdom, your advice. And of course, your stories. Really do appreciate you for coming on the Storybox podcast. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, mate.